Welcome. This is Jean Eaton of Information Managers. It is my honor and pleasure to be with you today at Practice Management Nuggets. This is a weekly interview series with practice managers, healthcare providers, or trusted vendors who support healthcare practices. Our topics help primary care practice managers, healthcare providers, and owners to implement, maintain, or improve their business and practice administration so that healthcare providers can focus on providing quality healthcare services. I am your host, Jean Eaton, the Practice Management Mentor with Information Managers. And this week, our guest is Lisa Proudfoot. Lisa is in her seventh year of being one of the instructors of the Health Information Program at State Polytechnic. Lisa has worked as a coding specialist and as an instructor at at SAIT. She has taught a wide variety of courses, including, but not limited to, privacy, data analysis, research, database design, project management, records management, quality management, and data collection. Lisa is also one of the instructors responsible for the practicums for the Health Information Management Program and has arranged and supervised of over 200 student placements in a variety of traditional and non-traditional settings. Lisa, I am delighted to have you as a guest with Practice Management Nuggets. Welcome. Thank you, Jean. Thanks for the invitation. We are going to have lots of information to talk about, and I'm really excited about getting into the details. Lisa, you and I have known each other for a number of years. Um, we're colleagues mm-hmm. in the same industry. I've had the great honor to take on a couple of students as practicums um, with information managers and with other locations that I've worked in healthcare practices um, in Alberta and, and indeed across Canada. So I really thrilled about being able to promote the profession and and most importantly about helping the students um, in the health information management uh, programs understand and explore some non-traditional opportunities in in health information management. So we're going to get into lots of great detail, but first of all, how did you get to this point? How did you get to say it? What's what's your story? Well, I decided to take the Health Information Management Program at SAIT. It looked like something that I would be interested in, and I liked the idea of a shorter program rather than taking a longer degree. I already had a degree, and so I wanted to um, continue on with a diploma, in this case, a two-year diploma. After graduation, I went to the Calgary Zone, and I was a coding specialist, and then when the opportunity arose, I came back to SAIT to start teaching. Great. And what's it like to be teaching at SAIT? I love it. I think I've found my favorite thing to do. I've always had an interest in teaching, um, and I actually considered becoming a high school math teacher, but decided against that at the last minute, but still had the opportunity to come back and hone my skills as an instructor, and I just I really enjoy the teaching aspect. I love meeting the students. Um, I, it's just fantastic. Excellent. And the students are always a, a lot of fun. Um, so, Lisa, in the healthcare um, primary care practices, what would be your number one tip to healthcare practice managers um, about health information management as a profession and, and as a student? Oh, number one tip. Well, I would say that our our profession is not one of the more well-known professions, and sometimes people overlook us because they haven't actually seen us in action necessarily. We typically work in the background, and oftentimes people think they need a certain type of employee, but they're really looking for a health information management professional. They just don't know it yet. Um, the skill set is quite broad, and they're really helpful in a clinical setting, definitely, especially if they're if you're trying to do um, chart management patient information, organization, and then research and analysis on that information, a health information management professional would be very good in those areas. Excellent. And you're right. As a profession, we tend to sit in in the back wings or in the basement, typically, um, and we sit in front of our computers. We don't get a lot of patient interaction, and even though we're, as a a profession, or on teams about implementing new procedures, implementing new technology, Mm -hmm. we don't get a lot of chances to talk with lots of people. Uh, but people see what we do on a, on a daily basis. So when you hear the statistics, the 10 most common sources of um, 
you know, pre precursors or predictors of heart attack comes from the work that we do in our in our practices. Mm -hmm. You know, I always oh. say that uh, my analogy that I use to explain the health information management profession is that it goes back to anatomy, and I say it's kind of like the central nervous system and the fact that we're connected to everything, but sometimes people don't necessarily think about us all the time, but we are in the background and we have an impact on most areas of healthcare in some way. Absolutely. So tell us, um, what are the what are the types of things that the students at SAGE and the other health information management programs across the country are learning? What are what are their skill sets? Uh, I'll start with the first year, I think, to explain this. Uh, first year and second year are very different in our program anyway. Um, other colleges may organize them differently, but in our program, the first year is focused mostly on um, getting a medical background and getting a start on data collection and records management. So they take things like anatomy, pathophysiology, and medical terminology to get a, a solid medical background. And we talk about the Canadian healthcare system and the different aspects, the different modes of delivery, um, different environments that people can receive care. They also learn their privacy legislation in their first year. We touch on it again in the second year, but the core learning is in the first year, specifically the Health Information Act for Alberta. And records management is also a big part. So we talk not only about paper charts, but also the hybrid environment moving towards the electronic health record. Then we move on to um, computer basics. So we teach them basic MS office skills in the first year, and they also get a taste of the EMR. At SAIT, we use MedAccess. So they, they have a little bit of an intro to the EMR. And I think that's mostly it in the, in the first year. We talk about data collection and abstracting as well, all throughout their entire program. Then second year, we move on to the higher level learning. And we talk a lot about database design and management. We teach them Oracle SQL and MS Access. We talk about statistics, um, including general stats, as well as healthcare statistics, like mortality rates, um, complication, infection rates, those kind of things. Data analysis, how to present a report, so how to not only extract the information, but how to put it into a meaningful report that will be helpful to the end user. And we talk about um, electronic health record standards and initiatives in much more detail in the second year. They have courses on research and epidemiology, and they do a, a mock chart audit in that course. So they go through patient charts, and they look for specific information, and then again, how to present it back to uh, a hypothetical requester in a meaningful way. We also teach them a lot of management things, so quality management, quality improvement, utilization management, risk management, project management, the list goes on and on. Uh, we touch on change management as well as leadership and team building. So that's the second year in a nutshell. And it's a, uh, it's a lot of information in a very short period of time. So the program yeah. may only be two years, but you're, you're putting through a whole bunch of information in that program. Yes, the students are, <laughs> they are, um, it's like a full-time job. They're very busy. Absolutely. One of the nice things that I really like of the way that the programs are designed is that it really leverages and builds on that continual learning. So you're not taking a course in anthropology over there because it's one of those things that you're supposed to have when you're in, in a post-secondary thing. Mm -hmm. You're studying the courses that you are going to use in your work life that build on other things so that you can develop more skills and, and become really experts in the information that, that you're managing. Absolutely. There's no fluffy courses that they take just because they have to fill hours. Everything is connected. Yeah, absolutely. No fluffy courses. <laughs> so there are a lot of things that the students are learning in the classroom. And in the SAIT program, they have a practicum placement as well. Absolutely. We actually have two. We have one at the end of the first year and one at the end of the second year. And it's, the practicum is crucial for them to start applying the, the theory. We do give them as much practical experience in the classroom as we can, but classroom is different than actually seeing it in action with live patient data, and it is different and it's very valuable. So there are two practicum placements. So what is the focus of the first year's practicum placement? Typically, we send the first years to a traditional site, usually to a smaller hospital where they will do things like um, 
chart management, they'll do some access and disclosure, release of patient information. They'll do uh, some data collection. So they're collecting information from the patient chart and classifying the information according to ICD-10-CA and CCI. Um, they'll also do some, like I said, records management. So in the smaller facilities, a lot of them are still using paper charts. Uh, they're in a hybrid environment, so they're using paper and electronic, and so the students learn terminal digit filing just in case they go to a paper environment. And it, it just depends on the site. Some students will do more access and disclosure. Some will do more data classification. But typically, the first year, we send them to a traditional site. All right. And the second year? The second year, we're really trying to focus on non-traditional placements as much as possible. Um, we want them to do some kind of project. So they're, they're using all of the skills they've learned in two years, and these sites vary greatly. We've had some people go to uh, primary care networks. We've had people go to the medical examiner's office. We've had people go to large urban hospitals. So it, it just completely varies from primary care areas all the way to acute inpatient settings. And the idea is to use their knowledge at a higher level and apply it to some kind of project. Okay. So if I was uh, um, thinking of what are the things that would make me as an employer in a primary care uh, private practice type of a, a facility, why would I want to consider having a health information management student or a new grad? As, as a new hire? As a new hire. Okay. Well, like I said, their skill set is very broad, and so they could be beneficial not only for clinical management, like managing the clinic and managing the patient information, but since they have that medical background, they can also have more, more meaningful, more deeper conversations with the doctors and really understand what the doctors and the other healthcare providers are trying to ask for. And we can ask the questions that will help further that research because we, we have that medical background. And so we understand the context in which they're trying to create reports or trying to uh, accomplish a new privacy initiative. We understand the background. Okay. So the independent private physician's office is, in many respects, a lot like um, a hospital. And it, it's a small version. You do all of the mm -hmm. same things that you would do in a hospital. You receive yeah. patients. You enter the registration information. You schedule appointments. You make sure mm -hmm. that the visit or the clinic notes is accurate and complete. You do mm -hmm. the coding for uh, retrieving for diagnostic information, for treatment information, and in a yeah. physician's office for billing information. Um, you make sure that all of the circle of care is complete, that the notes are complete, that it's sent to the right people at the right time. Mm -hmm. And the health information management students or, or their new grads note that medical terminology. So if you're, you're sending a patient for a referral to another specialist, another service, they understand the terminology. They, they understand the directions from the, the from the physician, the healthcare service provider, to the person that they have to make the referral to, and and they understand that if you're sending a person for a referral to um, uh, an orthopedic specialist, what types of other information might need to go with that patient. So mm -hmm. they, they know the big picture so they can ask the right questions and make sure the right information goes to the right place at the right time. Absolutely. And they can also help with data integrity because they know the system and they know um, they can catch little errors. Like if for some reason you have a male patient <laughs> being admitted to an obstetrics office, they're going to catch that. I would hope that most people would catch that because it's very obvious. But that's an example. Like if they have something that um, that is a data integrity kind of thing where it's it shouldn't be going together, the HIM professional should be able to catch that because they have both the systems background and the medical background. Right. And we've got more of more uh, focus to the primary care medical practices about providing services within that smaller practice that still meets the big objectives about making sure we've got um, physician profiles, physician paneling, mm -hmm. that have uh, like AIM programs in place, like analyze the data that's happening in that practice, all 
all of our two requirements that we've got the right information for the patient and we make sure that we've got a good workflow in place and, and make sure that we have um, really uh, a contribution to the healthcare service delivery as a bigger piece and, and making sure that we're providing good continuity of care. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the standards of care and the standards of practice um, for our medical clinics will come out with recommendations that you know a female under between the ages of this and that should have this type of a screening type of a program. Those are the types of things that the health information management professionals can take a look at on a, a service delivery on a clinic as a whole to say, these are the best standards that our service providers want to meet. How can I make sure that we are capturing the patients at the right time and the right place so that we're providing, meeting those best standards of care? Yes, absolutely. They can help create a, a best practices process, almost like a, a clinical map, basically, on how to how to make sure they're catching all of those areas and to make sure the right flags are being waved at the right time. Right. There are more things coming down the pipes for our private practices, um, including an accreditation process for clinics. So not only just the hospital-based clinics, but the independent practices. How would a health information management professional uh, fit into that role to support them with those objectives? Most health information management students are they have a fairly good attention to detail. That's one of the things that um, our students typically have that quality. We attract those kind of people. And so especially with accreditation, I've helped in a few accreditation process kind of things, and you really need to have attention to detail to make sure you're checking all the boxes, making sure the terminology is all the same, and that your standards are being met, and that um, your documentation is all in place. And we... We hammer home the importance of documentation constantly in the HIM program, not only clinical documentation, but just making sure that if you follow a process, for example, in a project, make sure you write down what you did, when you did it, and keep that documentation intact so that the next time you go to do a similar project, you already have a roadmap in front of you and you don't have to reinvent the wheel, so to say. Excellent. So when we have um, a new a new grad or perhaps even a, a practicum student coming into uh, a primary care practice, what types of things would you expect of a new grad? How can we help that transition? How can we make sure that we're providing them the right support and the right tools so that they're successful and it's a good uh, experience for the, for the grad? Uh, you kind of broke up a little bit on I couldn't hear all the question, but I'm assuming that you said how do we help prepare or be supportive for the new student. Am I correct? Correct. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, just making sure I had the question right. So we train our students for the nation. We we follow a national standard for the things that we train them. And then, of course, we say there will be site-specific instructions wherever you get hired or wherever you go for practicum. So one of the things that would be really helpful is for them to know, are there any special rules or special procedures that your clinic would follow? Um, not necessarily that it's different than everybody else, but just, just so the student has an understanding because we do warn them that things change from place to place and everybody has a different way of doing things. So that kind of support would be really beneficial right off. And then just the basic understanding that, yes, they have finished their program, but especially if, you, if you're taking a practicum student, that practicum experience is still part of their learning. So we are expecting that they will still be learning during that experience. And then once practicum is finished, we're expecting that they should be ready to hit the ground running and be ready to uh, step into the job environment very quickly. So basically, if you're taking a practicum student, um, they have all of their theoretical knowledge, but the, the practical component is very very crucial for them to actually put it all in place in their head and to put the right context to the theory that they know. And then, um, yeah, just having that supportive communication, somebody that they can ask questions and um, basically knowing where their resources are so that they can look things up if they need to. Okay. Supportive communications, that's a, that's a good term. I like that. Mm -hmm. So if an organization um, is interested about taking on a practicum student, what types of projects 
might they do, and what does an organization need to do to um, to recruit a practicum student? Well, the the beauty of the health information management program is that, like I said, the skill set is broad. So we've had an extremely wide variety of projects done by practicum students. We've had people focus solely on privacy, which would be one, like an example of what you were involved in, Jean, um, doing things like privacy impact assessments and helping with the process of the privacy impact assessments and creating manuals and creating best practices, helping to train staff, etc. We've had people working with databases and extracting information and also building databases. We had one student build an access database that was very complex last year. I was impressed with her. Um, we've had lots of data analysis done where people were doing chart audits and they're pulling specific information from um, a patient subset and then providing it back to the requester. That's one of the projects I did as a student. Um, I was working with a doctor who specialized in orthopedics and he wanted to know various wait times and how long surgery times were and were there any outliers. So I provided that information back to him in a graphical and written report. We've also had students involved in quality management projects like uh, Lean and Six Sigma. Those kind of projects would be involved as well. So like I said, it's, it's very broad. If people would be wanting to discuss potential projects or um, even just brainstorm projects, I would be the one to call, or I have another co uh, colleague, Stephanie Clack, and either of us would be thrilled to explore the possibility of a practicum placement. That would be great. There is a, an opportunity in, in a lot of organizations to take on students for a period of time to work on something that don't get done during the rest of, of the work year. Maybe you're implementing a new EMR, maybe you need to clean up the paper practice that you need to work on for mm -hmm. uh, creating your physician uh, panel or making sure that you've got the attending most responsible physician properly identified in your practices on paper or an EMR process. Um, doing some transition in the clinic. If you've got mm -hmm. a change in practice, a change in vendor, um, maybe you want to recruit some more specialists to your family practice to provide, mm -hmm. provide um, additional scope of services. These are types of projects that a student can do within that, that practicum time frame. Absolutely. Okay. So once a, a student has finished the program, They've got these wonderful multiple skill sets, so they can mm -hmm. plug in and support a clinic in, in lots of different ways. But mm -hmm. management is also something that the students learn. And tell me how how you think a health information management professional can actually help on the big picture clinic administration side of things. What are the management skills that the students learn? Well, this semester I'm I'm the instructor for most of the management type of areas and they're learning that we're in right in the middle of all of our courses right now about management and excuse me um, we're doing project management right now which might be my favorite course I love it so in that project management course we learn about the basics of project management and they do a mock project just so they can get used to planning and how to create a scope statement and what's a business case and how do you write one of those um, and we also talk about leadership and motivating people and um, Change management is becoming a huge part of our healthcare system, even more and more as the years go on. And so the students learn, uh, you know, we talk about why do people resist change and how can we help them, because change is going to happen. So how do we facilitate change in the best way possible? Um, what are some of the tips and techniques that will help people transition well through that change? Then we also talk about quality management, would be, which would be um, performance indicators and risk management and patient safety. Um, as well as utilization management, and this is especially <laughs> especially uh, time sensitive right now with all the provincial budget concerns going on. We talked a lot about we have limited resources and we have to make sure that things are streamlined appropriately um, and that we're following a an efficient process and just to trim the fat around the various edges are there things that were are repetitive and we can we get rid of those repetitive things. Um, like I said, streamlining is very important for management principles. We also just talk about leadership, and uh, motivation is a big part of that. We just finished talking about that the other day, actually. So they learn a lot about basic management principles and 
then some specifics, especially about project management. We go into the most detail about that one probably, and then we definitely touch on all of the other subjects. Now, this may change a bit from, from year to year, but it's my experience that in most of the health information management um, programs, there are maybe 50% of the students come in directly from high school, but 50, about 50% are what we might consider mature students or perhaps second, um, second occupation students. Is that about right? Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, we might have the percentage of straight from high school might be even lower, actually, um, depending on the year, obviously, like you said. But we've had people with a variety of – we've had doctors in our program. We've had um, people who have a computer background, science background. So a lot of people come in with previous education and with a degree already, and some do st come straight from high school. And we've had people as young as 17 or 18 in our program and as old as 60, probably. So our age – we're, it's a very diverse group, both in age, uh, educational levels, and culture. Okay. So um, we wouldn't w want to make the assumption that just because there's a new grad from this program doesn't mean that they are new to the workplace. They may have some really significant work skills besides mm -hmm. this program. Definitely, yes. We've had people who are on uh, a career change, maybe their third, fourth, fifth career change even. Yes, we all do that, don't we? Mm -hmm. So one of the things about the program is that you're giving them lots of computer and, and information technology type of skills, but a lot of our practices still work on, on paper. So we have mm -hmm. a nice balancing between um, the paper world and the electronic world and what I call the, the worst of all worlds, which is the hybrid. Ah, uh, the hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> it's an ugly monster. <laughs> um, but sometimes having the, the students understanding all of those um, parts of that continuum makes for a, a really well-rounded view. So if you've got a practice mm -hmm. that has been on paper for a long time and, you know, you see the light at the end of the tunnel and maybe now it's time to get ready for that EMR, being able to help make the decision, make the, the process changes, or mm -hmm. if you're stuck in the middle to help get to that next level and uh, improve your processes so that you can become truly um, an electronic uh, process are skills that the health information management uh, professionals can help you with. Yes, I would agree. Yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, this is a topic that uh, we're both very passionate about, um, mm -hmm. but we only have 30 minutes, and we're nearing the end of the time. Is there anything else, Lisa, that you want to make sure that, that we know, um, other opportunities you want to explore, things you want to put out there to our audience today? Basically, um, our, our push in the last three or four years has been to move into non-traditional areas, and that has been a, a big focus for us. We know there are hospitals out there. We know that they need us. But we also know that non-traditional areas need us as well. They just don't know it yet. So if you're thinking maybe this would be a fit for us, uh, please either contact me or if, if I'm unavailable, I can direct you to Stephanie as well. So we have two people who are excited to talk, especially to non-traditional areas. And we would like to discuss either practicum or just a, a full-time hire. If you need somebody who is like a health information management professional, we would be glad to point you in the right direction. Excellent. Um, one other thing that we wanted to share is that uh, the Health Information Management Professionals Week is March 22nd to the 28th. Mm -hmm. And on the website for CHIMA, which is the National Professional Association, there are lots of additional resources about what are health information management professionals and what are all the different types of things that, that we do as a profession, the type of skills that we have. So I'd like to encourage our, our audience to take a look at that information as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Lisa, it, I'm so glad that you were here as a guest today. You've shared a lot of information that we're both very passionate about. So I'm hoping that we have opened um, some opportunities and explored some opportunities with practices that perhaps hadn't thought about hosting a student or hadn't thought about recruiting directly from the HIM program before. Mm -hmm. We said that um, the students from the programs have a wealth of information that they have learned in a classroom setting and in the very uh, 
important practical types of settings. We've also talked about their management skills and how they can use that in the independent private uh, pri primary care facilities. Thank you, Lisa, for sharing your time and your tips, and I'm delighted that we had this time together. To our Thank audience, you. let's stay connected. We are here just about every Thursday with a live interview. The interviews are available on replay for a limited time. You can join us as a member for Information Managers and have access to all of these great interviews at a time that best fits your schedule. I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn. Do send us an invitation. You can also request to join our private members group in LinkedIn, Private or Practice Management Nuggets. I'm on Twitter at InfomanLTD and now on Facebook. I'd be tickled pink if you liked us. My email is gene at informationmanagers.ca. Each month I host a practice management Q&A where you ask the questions and our members contribute to the discussion and the sharing. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us for Practice Management Nuggets. I know that you are an excellent educator and you're a great champion both for the students and for the program and the profession. It's been an honor to have you with us today. Thanks, Jean. This is Jean Eaton, your Practice Management Mentor, asking you to stay tuned. I look forward to seeing you again at one of our upcoming events.